What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Mr. Mike or Mike, and today we are here for the One Pride Podcast, and we have a exciting one for you all tonight. Obviously, we got some breaking news that just happened a little bit ago, and we are here to have some fun. And I am here with the Dern. What's going on, Dern? What's going on, guys? It's uh, a lot of news today, so we're going to have a good one. Absolutely. Very exciting right there. And of course, we have Troxel Sports Talk. This is going to be a long day for him. And I love it, Trox. What's going on, man? All I got to say is this. Oh my no, God. <laughs> no, God. Yes. Please, no. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No! yes! <laughs> Mick and... Bogdan is on IR. And... We have Antonio Hightower. What's going on, man? What's up, you guys? Today I'm going to be the gridiron tone. Because <laughs> I have a lot to say with you all Lions fans. <laughs> yes, yes, I knew it. I've been talking about it. It's time to say hello to the chat. What's going on, Dat Panda Woman, Vash Starwin, the Gridiron Blitz, Blue J, Sarge, Hard Work Dedication, Vash again and Dat Dude live as soon as you guys roll in. I will say what's up to you. And if I miss it, don't worry. I'm not ignoring. It's just the bottom line because TA just jumped in the chat and I said so. Before we get to the show, we have some great news, folks. We have some great news, folks, that JoJo Burns and Dwayne Hogan jumped in. Also, the Infinite Sports Network channel has reached the goal of 1,000 subscribers in six weeks. Woo! Woo! Travis Troxel, Troxel Sports Talk. How do you think about that? Finally, Infinite Sports Network has hit a thousand subs, and it's all because of you, the people. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. You guys are all truly. The MVPs. That was a quick way to get up there, folks. And it is a huge shout out to the subscribers as well as everybody in ISN. And Dern, what do you think about that, buddy? It's it's pretty humbling because I, in my opinion, what my thoughts were, I didn't think we were going to reach that many that fast. Mm -hmm. And it just tells how loyal us Lions fans are. And it kind of tells how well we are doing as a group and it just says that they like our content and we like bringing it to them. Like truck said, you guys are the MVPs. Absolute MVP and a huge shout out to Antonio Hightower. He works a lot folks, Antonio Hightower from myself. And I know the rest of ISN, we thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. He does a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you don't see because behind the scenes is where all the work goes. So we appreciate you, buddy. Oh, uh, thank you, guys. And, folks, we've seen here that the General View joined in. Frog Crop, the MVP himself, Dr. Detroit, Eric Brenner, Steve-O. Yes, and if I miss your name again, again, it is not on purpose. It will be calling you out and i see the darn two even though he's in here but let's just get right to the big hold on time. hold on we forgot one more person go we are gonna bring in mark orm from orm's forum okay what's going on fellas how you guys doing great great day great day man 1000 subscribers um can't believe it that fast can't i can't believe how fast that happened um, I want to thank everybody, man, for this. Um, I want to thank Gridiron Blitz. I want to thank Micro Mike. I want to thank Antonio Hightower, the Dern Noble Sports. Uh, I want to thank Travis Troxel. This is awesome, man. I, I, I'm so proud to be an ISN member, guys. Um, absolutely love it. And I just want to thank the, all the – I want to thank all the subscribers. Thank all the guys in the chat, OPP. Just the whole thing, man. It, 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 this has been a great, great. When I decided to do this, man, about like, I think back in March, I decided to do this, this YouTube thing, man. Uh, it's just been fun all around, man. It's just been fun all around. And we building, boys. We building, man. So can't wait to put more content out for everybody. 
Uh, can't, I want to thank all yeah, the subscribers. You guys have been awesome, man. You guys are making this channel what it is. It's all about you guys, man. And, and, and we're going to do big things, man, in the future. Woo! Let's go, babies. Absolutely. Woo! Let's go. And as you've seen on here, the Lions just made some breaking news today by signing Taylor Decker to an extension, a six-year, $85 million contract. Wowzers. What do you think about this, Travis Troxel? What do you think about the Lions extending Taylor Decker? No, God! What? No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, my gosh. I mean, we just paid $85 million before Kenny Galladay and also for all these people penalties what is the biggest drive killer penalties taylor decker owns that owns that crown so he's not too happy about it and let me let me throw my spiel in here really quick to me it's not that big of a deal in regards to it's 14.17 a year for a left tackle he's now the seventh highest paid left tackle in the game just to wait a year, he will be falling down past the 10s to the 12s and 13th just like matthew stafford did we got him locked down. Now we can focus our attention to other players, but the left tackle position is taken care of. It is a lot of money, but so is in every single contract except for tackles and defensive ends. They get the big bucks and the quarterback position, the Dern. What do you think about this? First, I want to give a shout out to Dat Panda Woman. That's my daughter. Um, Hey, sweetheart. Oh, oh. Woo! Um, so I'm, I'm indifferent about this. Um, I saw what Tone said. He's an okay run blocker and a pretty good uh, pass blocker, and I totally agree with it. Um, he commits quite a few penalties every now and then, but my thing is he is average to above average. And if we were to move on from him, who is to say that we find someone better, like in the draft? You don't know. So I will take the average to above average rather than the unknown. Um, and like you said, it's not that big of a cap hit. And we've got him locked up for years. Yeah, and I, I totally get your positioning there. Antonio Hightower, give your initial thoughts of this signing. <clears throat> this thing on oh yes i've been waiting for this <laughs> <laughs> let's go wow let me just say i'm kind of surprised the lions fans i'm not really surprised i know a lot of people didn't like taylor decker let me just say this i've been hearing lions fans saying they want to keep matthew stafford up right oh matthew stafford had a good old line in so long oh we got to protect matthew stafford mm -hmm. but we but be proud of left tackle money that realistically speaking it's kind of underpaid for the position. Let's not forget guys like Nate Soldier, average left tackle. We got four years, season two mil. That's two years ago. Mm -hmm. The baseline is higher now. Yeah. We paid Taylor Decker four years, 60 million. Deion Dawkins with the Bills, good left tackle. He got that money. They praised him. Yes. But but the Lions play that guy. Oh, Taylor Decker getting paid too much. Look at the penalties. Let me tell you, we got three years, season six million. You know who liked the league in penalties? Let me tell you, we had like what, 19? But I don't hear Texans fans saying anything about that. Oh, Terry Decker ain't a great run blocker. No, Terry Decker's pretty good run blocker, but he's the best pass blocker on this team. I heard so many people saying, why we ain't pay Graham Glasgow? When tackles are more important need, and it's going to hurt the quarterback more if you don't pay your tackle. Yet, we upset that Taylor Decker got the amount of money that he deserved. He didn't get overpaid. And if, first of all, this, this is not overpay. 15 years. 15 mil a year for a left tackle isn't an overpay. It's really not. There's a ton of teams that would pay this man 18 to 20 mil a year yeah. just to be Taylor Decker because they don't have even average left tackle play, let alone the above average left tackle play that we have. And not only that, we're in a division against elite edge rushers. But y'all want to let him go. Who, who going to replace him? Big V? You think Big V going to replace Taylor Decker? No. Nope. no. You think Tyler Crosby going to replace Big V? Um, no. Taylor well, Decker? Nope. You think you're gonna drive yeah. one? You think you're gonna drive one? Because let me tell you something: if you don't get Panasu well, you're probably not gonna get a good luck tackle in this drive. If you was gonna get one, it would have been the last drive. So this is a pretty good deal. This is a better deal than people want to give it credit for. And I saw a lot of people going like, "Man, 
Tyler Decker was trash. Look what he did against Khalil Mack, even though he was good against Khalil Mack last year until the fourth quarter of the second game, which is funny. I just kind of found that funny. Like, like guys like Russell Okun got four years, 53 mil. Mm-hmm. Average. This average guy. Nick, we always brought up Nate Soldier. Donovan Smith. Three years, 41 and a half million. Average guys. Around the same amount of money that Taylor Decker's going to be making. But he get 15 mil a year and we all go crazy. It's kind of just wild to me. You know what's wild to me? You know what's wild to me is we have 44 in the chat with only 18 thumbs up. Let's get all the way to 44 thumbs up. Please, it helps get this video out via algorithm. I am going against the legacy media. And boy, oh boy, they are tough to go against when you are an independent content creator such as myself. And I am near 5,000 subscribers. If you have not subscribed and 50% of you are not, subscribe now. Subscribe to everybody on the panel and help bring Detroit to the next level. Trox, is there a rebuttal that you have for what Antonio Hightower just stated? Yeah, he is still Maybelline to me. (laughs) <laughs> that is a real rebuttal, a three-line three sentence. Line <laughs> I, I want to say something really quick. Um, it's very encouraging because the news in camp, I know it's just camp, but he's stonewalling everyone. I, I don't think he's lost very many battles. He is stonewalling everybody. And and here's the deal. I, I concur when it comes to Antonio Hightower. The left tackle is such an important piece to a team. The left tackle, the defensive end, the quarterback, there's positions that you need to have on a team or you're going to be hurt. Who is Who would take over for Taylor Decker? That would be very difficult. You'd have to look into the draft. You'd have to look at being a top five draft pick if you're looking to get an elite guy. We got this guy. in In my opinion, this contract is not that bad. If you look at Jake Conklin, his contract he got this offseason was a monster one, fairly good. And I think that Taylor Decker has a higher ceiling, in my opinion. So to me, the contract is really not that bad, in all honesty. And I know there's concerns about, well, what about Kenny Galladay? Why isn't Kenny Galladay get signed? And let me tell you, when in regards to contracts, generally, you try to get the easier ones done first. You try to get the easier bills done first. And if you look at what taking place here, to me, the Taylor Decker contract would be much easier to get done before Kenny Galladay's contract. So let's talk about Kenny Galladay. Do you th- are you worried, Travis Troxel, that he is not paid as of right now? It's getting a little worrisome. I'm still not pushing no panic button. Mm-hmm. But there is an area of like, okay, what's going on? Yeah. You know, this is the time of... Bob Quinn's time where he starts getting these contract stuff done and we're, you know, getting into what is it? Eight or nine more days and we'll have some Lions football and his contract ain't done. Like this is the time where you're supposed to be having this contract stuff done and you know, it's not done yet. So it's a little area for concern, especially since you did lock up Taylor Decker first. But like you were saying, you know, you got to get the easier contracts done. Now, I'm not all opposed to Taylor Decker. I do want to put this out there. I'm not totally opposed just because you pass on Tristan Wirfs and and guys like that to where you got your guys that you needed. So that means you have faith in a Taylor Decker. But the us, the fan base, a lot of us just want to see wins. Nothing else, nothing more. We want to see wins on Sundays. And I'm with you. I want to see wins as well. May I ask a question? If Taylor Decker is not the left tackle this year, do we win more or do we win less? As of right now, if he's not our left tackle, we're going to lose more. Okay. So to me, we have to see how this, this year plays out, but that's kind of the way I put it. Are you going to win more or win less with Taylor Decker? You're going to win more. I think that is the the truth of it, as well as apparently he is dominating in camp. And we're going to find out if this is the defensive line or if this is Taylor Decker, because it could be both. You know, it could be one of those deals where Trey Flowers has lost a step or the Aquara is not doing so good. But are you concerned, Dern, in regards to Kenny Galladay and not getting the contract before Taylor Decker? 
Um, I, I want to emphasize a little bit on how important the left tackle is. If your quarterback is right-handed, that's the one of the most important positions on your team <laughs> is because that's his blind side. Now, if you have a left-handed quarterback, that's your right tackle. Mm-hmm. So um, for Galladay, kind of. I, I would rather have – okay, don't kill me for this, guys. Don't kill me, okay? I would rather have Decker signed than Galladay because of how important it is. Okay. And the way the rumors are for the cap next year, it might not happen to get Galladay back. So I, I it's just a thought process that I'm having um, until I get more information but Galladay is going to ask for a lot of money, a lot of money. And Tone is kind of right a lot of the time where people overhype Galladay. And he's not that top five wide receiver. He's, he's around top 10. And he's probably going to want top five money. So I don't know if I'm in position or not in position, but if I would want that for the team. Mike, I think you're muted. Oh, I, I thought I was tripping. You're looking at when it when it comes to the wide receiver position, you're looking at many different stats in regards to, you know, touchdowns, receptions, this, that, and the other. You know, you got another wide receiver on the other side, you got a quarterback. When it comes to the offensive line, I think it's a little more easier to do the details, in my opinion. And so I can see why they got Taylor Decker done first. Right. With that said, there's also some other news, and this is jaw dropping news. Is I, I'm shocked to see this, that the Detroit Lions has placed Nick Bodden on IR. Call me shocked. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw this to Antonio Hightower first. What do you think about Nick Bodden go to IR? Are you shocked? <sighs> um, <laughs> hmm. Am oh, I sure? man. This isn't that shocking that he got injured. It, it was kind of shocking he got put on IR. I was like, whoa, caught me out of – it caught me off guard a little bit, you know. But, hey, at least he could say he got put on IR instead of getting put on his couch, which would have happened if they would have cut down to the 53-man roster. But, man, you know, this is going to be a – um, I want to say a big loss, but it won't. Um, This will be a <laughs> loss. This is yeah. – you know, it's a loss. You know, he's kind of like you lost a dollar. Yeah. No, you still got a 1000 um, I was looking um, like I was rapping. I see some people yeah. going crazy in the comment section. I see you buffed up, Don Burr, Detroit, Edward Jr. Welcome. If I have missed you, John Kapler, let me know. Technical Jeff, I'm sure I miss a lot of you guys. But yeah, look, this dude's injury prone, okay? This is what happens when you're injury every injured every single year. But if you've not hit that like button, please smash it. I have 53 in the in the chat with 33 likes. Let's get it all the way to 53. Please do so, and that would help the content get out. Steve-O, first off, I also want to ask the chat. Are you guys happy that, that Taylor Decker got extended? Because I'm, I didn't ask you guys that. Are you happy? Why for yes and for no? Let me know in the chat. Just place it down there. While we talk about this, the Dern, how Nick Bodden's on IR, are you shocked? You know, it, it's probably like, okay, I don't like injuries, so this is going to sound really, really bad, and forgive me for this, but it's probably the best thing that could have happened to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry for saying that, but what's his name? Hey, Dern. Get over here! <laughs> K- so, Kabinda? He's JGB happy. Well. We got we got some indifference in here. We got JGB happy. We got Rich Law happy. The Gridiron Blitz, that's definitely not happy. Let's see. Um, buffed up down. You always okay. Well, buffed up has got got that bag on his head. So we're seeing how this chat goes. Make sure you hit that like button, Travis Troxel. I gotta ask you this because you love this man. You're you're in. I mean, you literally considered marrying this man. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't go that how, far. Was your life over when you heard that Nick Bodden got placed on IR for the record he is my brother from another mother but <laughs> let's go 
Let's I, go! I am devastated about this news. Let me give you guys a little history lesson, okay? Back in San Diego State, he completed 13 of 38 passes as a quarterback for 147 yards and a touchdown. He had two interceptions. He also caught 15 passes for 137 yards as a junior. So what does this relate to him being placed on IR? Listen to my history class for a little bit. (laughs) He had 15 for 103 yards and his first touchdown. And then he also was the lead blocker for two different 2,000-yard rushers in Donald Pumphrey and Rashad Penny. Okay. So regular fullbacks. So what (laughs) is the Detroit Lions' number one thing that we lack in? What D-line. we are lacking, we are lacking strong a D. guy. You're definitely a strong D. You gotta <laughs> have that strong D. You gotta push that thing right through the pile. But we did get Penasini. He can push through the pile. We're lacking strong D's. But you know what? We're also lacking that 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 is that is that we got 53 in the chat with only 35 oh. thumbs up. That's lacking. Also, we're lacking a man who could stay healthy. This guy is never healthy. Okay, I I, I, I agree. He needs to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. But one thing that we are lacking is a legit run game. If this man has led two guys to 2,000 yards, mm-hmm. something that we haven't seen since Barry Sanders. Okay. We need a player like that. Now, I am a little upset that, you yeah. know, he is injury prone. I will give him that title. He, I mean, until he proves me otherwise, he needs to start a... Hey, Nick Bodden, I'm going to talk to you right here, right now. <laughs> if you need to stay healthy, there's three things you need to do. Work need on to. strength, work on speed, and work in yoga. Because no. you need that flexibility to not Ye- get injured. And stay you away need from to Carrie drink Johnson. some milk. That's and right. you need to drink some milk because that gives you strong bones. That's right. Let's move on to... Should we take Leonard Fournette? Should we pick this running back up? Because this has been a conversation since he'd been released by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Antonio Hightower, should we pick up Leonard Fournette? He's going to take my answer. <laughs> so this is a conversation I've been seeing a lot of people talk about. Mm-hmm. I literally saw somebody say, let's pick up Fournette. He's better than carry on. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Who? Leonard Fournette? Somebody said, man, he's a proven running back. He's effective. If he's so effective, why was he cut? The Jaguars literally put a statement. We couldn't get a fifth. We couldn't get a six. We couldn't even get a seven for him. When a team would rather cut you, and he went on an expensive contract. When a team would rather cut you than keep you, that should tell you a lot about how you were playing. This is Jacksonville, though. You got to understand this team's going for straight up first pick in this draft. So you kind of got to throw everything that they do right now on an asterisk. I mean, they be getting rid of everybody. But if I'm a team and I think this is a good player, I can get him for like a seven round pick. A guy who most likely won't make um, make my roster. Everybody would do that. Yeah. So what does that say about Fournette as a player? That a team wouldn't even give up a seventh. A six-round yeah. pick. But that is also because they don't want a contract. They don't want right. to do I they think that's why he wasn't picked up on waivers as well. I think it has more to do with that. And I think he does have a personal issue in regards to how to kind of communicate. But, it's, again, it's hard to talk about in Jacksonville because they have so much dysfunction over there. But I get your point fully, Antonio Hightower. So he says no. I oh, says uh, yes. Oh. better than Bo. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Rob, hey, drop. way better than Bo. Frog, hey. drop, drop. Go ahead. You're saying Frog Crop dropped a $10 super chat. Huge shout out to Frog Crop. He says, here is what is lacking is love from crop damage from the frog. Bow, bow. He's 100% right. That's exactly what we're lacking. The love <laughs> from the frog crop. We appreciate you, frog. And we are cropping all the crops just because of you. I appreciate you. It's going back to the channel. Dern. Okay, Leonard Fordette. Tonio says yes for, for Bo Scarborough, so he'd switch that out. What say mm-hmm. you, Leonard Fournette? I mean, 
he's correct. He's better than Bo. Okay. They do the same thing, but he's better than Bo. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with what he does. He's not shifty at all. He just runs straight downhill, but he has a good burst. Yeah. He can be fast when he's going in a straight line. And he's supposed to be knocking people over the way he runs. But that's the problem. Problem. Excuse me. He doesn't knock people over. He goes down pretty much on the first hit every time. And yes, that's yes, this is actually a Middle Eastern version of Matt Patricia to the top right. It's uh, Matt Patricia Sports <laughs> Talk. You're 100 percent correct. That is so far comment Matt of the Patricia. day. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Leonard Ford at Travis Troxel. What do you say? Should the Lions take a look at him? Time now. I mean, as a fan, I would say absolutely look at him. Now, we got to remember one thing, and I'm not trying to make this, you know, a Debbie Downer, but we are the Detroit Lions. When have we made power moves? Arr. You know, if we made power moves, I'd be like, you know, there's a good possibility that we could, you know, but a lot of that is we haven't been winning a lot. Mm -hmm. Last year, we came off a 312 and one season. Now, granted, we had 21 people on injured reserve. We had our starting quarterback go down with uh, his second back injury. You know, so it's like, I would like him here. He's indifferent. I don't You're think he's going to come here. So I see no Aponte with a bunch of Fs. Tell me what you guys, do you want him to come here? Why for yes and for no? Let me know. What do I think about... What would I think about Leonard Fournette here? You know what, man? Antonio Hightower, for the first time, I may be agreeing with you on this. I think he would be an upgrade over Bo Scarborough. I do. Because he does have that same mentality of running straight down. We got the shifty swifty. Okay, we got knee brace carry on. You throw, him, <laughs> you throw this in here. And to me, that wouldn't be a bad combination of one, two, three. I don't think it'd be a game. Just dependent on the contract, though. Everything is always contract related. If he's wanting some crazy amount, get about here, go somewhere else, um, then no for sure. But just as like a veteran minimum, I wouldn't see a problem with that. I see a lot of no's in here. People are not liking with that. So indifferent, indifferent, yes, no, maybe so. But I appreciate you. I see that we got 56 in the chat. Let's get 56 likes up. Again, if you've not subscribed to my channel and 50% are not subscribed, subscribe. I do live shows every single Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Subscribe to everyone on the panel. We're part of ISN and we bring content. The One Pride podcast is on Travis's channel on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We are in training camp mode and folks, we are very, very close to getting this roster filled up. There's going to be folks on the roster bubble. There's going to be people that we're going to be shocked that do not make the roster and vice versa. We'll be shocked that they make the roster. Travis Troxel, what are two players that are on the roster bubble that will make the team that you don't expect and vice versa? Players that don't make the team that you do not expect. Well, uh, Cabota, the linebacker, I believe, he's been putting in time at fullback. Now, prior to my guy, Nick Bodden, going down, I would have said he's not going to make the team. Mm -hmm. But because he has been actually performing quite well at fullback in limited time, and he's going to still be a special teamer. Okay. So he does have value there. He has, you know, obviously M Matt Patricia loves his versatility. So I definitely think that Cabota, I forgot his first name. I think it's Jason Cabota. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to make this squad. Another person would be, well, I've been saying he's going to make the team for quite some time. And that is Jamal Agnew. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Antonio Hightower, what are players in your opinion, that are going to make this roster that you did not expect and vice versa? Yes, good one. How about you, the Dern? Okay. I got a couple of guys that I don't think are going to make it. Okay. Jonathan Williams, 
I don't think he's going to make it. Um, Kenny Wiggins, I don't think makes it. Okay. Um, you guys are going to be mad at me. Bo Scarborough, I don't think he makes it. He keep, He's wow. still not healthy. He's still not healthy. He's been out this entire time. Ty Johnson's looking pretty good. All the running backs I heard have been looking pretty good except for Scarborough because he's not there. Um, that's for offense. Defense, uh, Mike Ford and D Virgin for the corners because mm-hmm. I heard the other ones are playing pretty well. Um, I haven't heard Bobby Price at all, so I don't think he makes it. Okay. And we just picked up a guy called Huggins, I think. I think he will be battling out Higgins. with Kevin Higgins or Huggins. Yeah. Higgins, Huggins, Higgins, Huggins, Huggins be Higgins. They're it's, right there. Huggins, Huggins. I, I read Huggins oh, okay. in uh, transactions, so um, it's going to be a battle between him and Kevin Strong, I think. Craig so Jockman, awesome. welcome to the chat. I appreciate you, everyone. Welcome to the chat. Make sure, make sure you hit that like button if you've done so. Also, 8 p.m. Eastern time in 29 minutes. Yes, 29 minutes. You guys run the show. You ask us the questions. We shall answer. I'm sure a lot's going to come to Taylor Decker and other things. We are here. So get your questions ready in 29 minutes. In 29 minutes, we will answer the questions about the big deck, the strong D, Penasini, penetration you throw it at us we will grab it and hold it down for you because that's what we do one more I, yeah go ahead there's a question mark with austin bryant because he's still on the pup list yes yeah he's still on the pup list but i got a quick question was that who is gonna make the team or who's not making the team not making the team oh so then i gave you two wrong answers <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> let's hear it let's hear it <laughs> My bad, y'all, because I have them making the team. Absolutely. Okay, so me making the team, man. Look, look here. Here's the deal, folks. I think that the Detroit Lions, Bo Scarborough does make the team, in my opinion. He does make the team for that running back position, and that puts Ty Johnson onto the practice squad because Huntley is going to make the team. Oh, so you you feel that, uh, what do you call it, him pushing uh, – what was that? A Jeep by uh, this off season. You, you felt like that's not enough. He needs Ty to Johnson, be pushing yeah. more than a G. He needs to push. He G. needs to push. A, he needs to push the offensive line forward because the holes aren't opening and he's got to get through them. I think in my opinion, yes, I think Ty Johnson is a practice squad. And I think that, I think that Abushi does not make the roster. Kenny Wiggins makes it over him. And I think we go three quarterbacks with David Blau is number three. On the roster, Jamal Agnew does not make the roster because we're only going five wide receivers, in my opinion. That's what I see. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if this is the case. Antonio Hightower, are you back? If so, let me know. If not, I will keep talking to fill the void. Clearly, he's not back. (laughs) What would be a shock to you, Trox? Of someone making the roster, would Agnew making the roster shock you, or be like, "Oh, okay, kind of, kind of figured that." Um, it's going to be more of a I figured that because I have him making the team. Okay. He doesn't only just bring wide receiver value; he brings return value. Mm-hmm. And as a returner, you have to win in three phases of the game. Obviously, game to game, it has to at least be two out of the three, but you have to be somewhat consistent in, in three phases of football. Your offense, your defense, and your special teams. If you do that, you got a high chance of actually going far in the playoffs and making the playoffs. Let's go start there first, making the playoffs, because we haven't made the playoffs in, what, three years? Facts on facts, crime. Folks, I see we got 62 in the chat. Let's get 62 likes up and go ahead and finish your... So that's why I, I feel that Jamal Agnew does make the team. It's because of the, uh, the versatility value that he does bring. Okay, and okay. That'll be interesting to see. That'll be interesting to see. I don't think we're going to have a fullback. I think Nada will be the tight end slash fullback, and Hunter Bryant makes the team. Oh, Hunter Bryant makes the team. I totally so, forgot about him. Four tight ends, even though it's like kind of like three because the other one will be used. So that'll be interesting to see. In training camp, many things stood out, Dern. Many things stood out in training camp. 
whether you've seen it on the Lions live stream on their on their internet channel or you're seeing it on YouTube or you heard about it, what is one thing that really stood out for you for the Detroit Lions Detroit training camp? A couple of good things that I kind of shocked me and just made, made me feel better. Agnew was one of them. I hear that he's doing amazing in his transition. So that he, he's proven me wrong because I didn't think he was going to make it. And now I'm starting to believe that he might. So who's going to make the team between him and Marvin Hall now? Because they do the same thing. Yes. It's going to be between them and Decker. Like I said before, he's stonewalling people. It's, it's sounding great. Okay. Okay. You know, look, I, I think that that's very good standing out for Jamal Agnew. I think it's fantastic that he's doing that. Hopefully it can transition. What's something that stood out for you, Travis Troxel, Troxel Sports Talk? Uh, well, we haven't had many injuries. None that is going to say, okay, this is going to be our season on the line. Okay. And let me find some wood. Knock on that wood. Yeah, because uh, I want to keep that trend. So that's one thing that really stood out for me is the lack of injuries. I love that part. That is probably the one thing I am super excited because in a few more days, in 12 more days, we got Detroit Lions actual football. Actual football. It's so exciting. We've been talking all off season about this football, football, football. We are ready to really see the action. This has been a tumultuous offseason from not just the NFL, but everywhere. It's been a crazy 2020. Something that stood out to me in, in camp, and I think it's going to continue to stand out in the season, is how good Marvin Jones Jr. has been. Hearing yeah. this man dominate defenses, stealing the ball, first down after first down, I am excited. This man was talked about being traded away. This man was, was talked about being the dustbin of the Lions roster. Yet this guy is standing out more than anyone in camp. I love it. I love what I'm seeing from Marvin Jones Jr. I think he's going to have a fantastic year. Absolutely fantastic year as long as he stays healthy. And I think him and Kenny Galladay are going to be a very good one-two combination duo. I love what I'm hearing and I love what I'm seeing. I think it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And so all the people that stated this guy should be traded, it's looking like that should be a no-go. Definitely near the trade deadline if we're trying to get for a roster spot. Shout out to Dat Panda Woman. Huge shout out saying subscribe to the channel. That's the Dern's child. Awesome. Shout we appreciate out. you. Yep. Um, I, I want to add something to that. Yes, um, yes. That, that's the problem, though, is where are we going to be near that trade deadline. I think he, and maybe Galladay too, depending on how much he wants, could be trade traded. I really hope that's not the case, Dern. Right. That means yeah. we would suck. I agree. Completely I agree. But I'm just saying don't be shocked if yeah. we're bad and it happens. If we're a top five draft pick, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a whole new thing. Hopefully that's not the case. Right. Antonio Hightower, what is one thing that stood out to you and Detroit Lions training camp so far? Um, Armani Aurarier's adjustment in his second year, probably the one for me. Woo! I didn't think he'd be this. I didn't, like, he's, he sounded like he's been pretty, really good. Started to see it on the field. I, I think he was, he didn't have the greatest, he didn't have the most responsibility last year, but he handled it pretty well. You know, he sounded like he's been playing better than Okuda. Which I mean, it's kind of be expected, you know. Even if he's mm -hmm. a third overall pick, he plays arguably the hardest defensive position in our mm -hmm. scheme, where cornerbacks are asked to do more than in most schemes, and he has to make that adjustment in one month. It's kind of a lot to ask for a guy who just got out of college, you know. And it's a lot to ask. Yeah, I'm saying, like, if this is a regular off season where he had months and months and months, you know, rookie training camp, rookie mini camp regular training camp, then practicing, then yeah, I can understand you being upset with your rookie struggling, but dude been getting better every single day. I mean, I mean, 
he's got a he's got a lot to do. And the, and the great thing is the Lions have asked him to do a lot. The Lions aren't forcing him to be a starter. But let's get off of that. Um, Amani, Amani's jump is surprising to me, um, kind of, because I didn't think he was really. I still don't think Amani's really gonna be where we think he can be to like next season. Where him and Okuda could be about three years. It does. I'm gonna say for him, him and Okuda to be that dynamic duo, because later round corners take a lot longer to develop than than um first round corners. You know, it's a different development track. But you know, Amani's probably been the guy who's been the most surprising to me, and I still think Trufant's the best corner on the team. But Amani's development has been surprising. Amani Awari, a huge shout out to you. We love what you're doing. Right. And I think everybody loves it. Great, great fifth round draft pick. Absolute steal, in my opinion. And it's showing now, but it's time to transition to some real football talk. Because guess what, folks? We are close to Detroit Lions versus Chicago Bears. And I want to talk some Chicago Bears and Lions football. You it's Chicago time. Cubs. It's time. <laughs> Let's get that Kool-Aid going. Let's get that Mike Will going. 60 in the chat and only 50 thumbs up. Let's get all the way to 60. Travis Troxel, how do we beat the Chicago Bears? Give me one one thing you want to see the Lions do to beat the Chicago Bears. Hold on one quick second. Okay. My one thing is run the football. You run, 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 and run some more. That's what I want to see. But we do have the gridiron blitz on the ones and twos. What's going on, Grid? Oh, yes. Hold on. Yes. All right. What's going on, Gridiron? <laughs> there we go. What's up? Mike, I know you're on your schedule, man. I know I'm throwing you off. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to kind of get in real quick and say, first of all, con condolences to Chadwick Bozeman's family, man. Uh, Wakanda forever. The second thing I wanted to say was what impressed me was what the Lions did last week. The Lions, I'm, I was so, I think it was probably one of the proudest moments I've ever had as being a Lions fan. The Lions decided last Tuesday not to practice. And what that did is inspired other teams to do the same thing, where it, it even transcended into the NBA uh, and, and the NBA took it to the next level. And that was our team, fellas. Our team did that. And, and I must say that uh, it, it, was, it was probably the proudest moment that I've had to be in the Lions fan uh, to see the, the team come united because a lot of us are Lions fans and we, we are divided because of how we feel about the team. We're divided because some of us may feel that others don't know football. Whatever the situation is, it divides us. And what the Lions did was brought us together. It really did, man. And I was so proud to be a Lions fan and our Lions promote change. With that being said, I wanted to also let you guys know that we do have the Infinite Sports Network website that we wanted to launch today, but we are when we're unable to. It will definitely be launched Thursday. And in doing so, we will have a charity store where the two phrases that the Lions said, I think it was, we won't be silent. And what was the other one, Trav? It, it, it was... Uh, we won't be silent, this, and uh, this world the, can't go on. The world yeah. can't go on. Yeah, right. And so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna donate all of those proceeds to a a charity. So it will be up. But I, I thank you guys. You guys are tremendous. Thank you to the chat as well. We have twelve more days until we get to see our team on the field. It's been a really tough year, but we're all about to come together. And I appreciate you guys, the Dern, Antonio. All of ISDN. Thank you for getting us to a thousand subs and have a great show, gentlemen. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. And I see that Pride Time B joined the, the chat. What's going on, Pride Time D? D Pride Time B. <laughs> you screw me on, up Pride? with the Pride Time. You screw me up. A huge shout out <laughs> to him. He's the Lions content creator with that strong B. How do we beat them? How do we beat the Bears? Continue what you're saying, Trox. Yeah, I mean, you got to run the football. You got to continue to run that football. Wear the defense out. You got Khalil Mack. You got to wear Khalil Mack down. Then you got to deal with Akeem Hicks. Wear him down. These are big bodies. Wear them down by running the football. That is a major key to winning the first game of the season. 
That's facts. Dern, how do we beat them Bears? First, by stopping the run and then getting after the quarterback. I know Trubisky is awful, but just in case it's Foles, you got to rattle him. Yep. yep. You know, that yeah, was... That was- That was absolutely stunning right there and how you broke that down. Antonio (laughs) Hightower. My main answers will be later on. Okay. Antonio Hightower, what say you, man? How do we defeat the Chicago Bears here real soon? Um, First of all, Big V, you're going to to prove you deserve that contract in your first Mm -hmm. game because uh, Bears got a a couple guys who can rest that pass. Or, you know, opposite of Khalil Matt, they got Robert Quinn. Yep. We're gonna see how we're gonna see how good you is real quick. Yeah, because I already know I've already seen Taylor Decker against Khalil Mack. I know what he's gonna I know about where he's gonna be for years. Big V mm, haven't seen it. So first thing we gotta do is protect the passer. Also, we're gonna see how that interior looks against Akeem Hicks. Now we I mean, I still have questioned if Akeem Hicks is really as good as he was that one year. But if he's as good as he was for that one year, ooh, that interior gonna have a problem. Um yeah, the first thing we're going to do is protect the passer because the Bears have a real pass rush. The secondary is pretty trash. So if you just protect the passer, you pretty much pretty much got it from there. Um, stop Allen Robinson. He's like the third best receiver in the division. You got to stop that guy, you know. Sometimes they just throw it up to him. Like, we're going to need somebody to stop him. Slay didn't do an amazing job of stopping him. His best job, the best thing Slay ever did was get burnt by him so bad that the QB threw it behind him and he got a pick. That's like Slay's biggest highlight against Allen Robinson, Mitchell Trubisky being a horrible QB. Um, you probably want Trubisky to start because Foles can be a good QB, and Trubisky will never be a good QB. So <laughs> I take my money rolling with Trubisky. I've seen that Foles can play good. Um, I've seen that Trubisky can play bad. So I would rather just have Trubisky start. Shut down Allen Robinson. Um, hope they don't pick up Leonard Fournette. And just let – oh, and cover long enough so Trey Flowers can dominate them again. Okay, okay. Here, Here's how we win. We have to win first off. It's a must. I don't care what anyone says. To me, this is a must-win game. You have to beat your division rivals on week one. We have not won a week one game in a long time. I am ready. We lost – we lost against the Jets. We tied versus the Arizona Cardinals. It is time to get a win now versus the Chicago Bears. It's a great way to start the season off by beating the rivals. Beating the rivals. We have 57 in the chat, 52 thumbs up. Let's get those thumbs up. Now 61. In regards to how we got to do it, we got to run the football. Got to run the football, guys. I know what we can do when it comes to the wide receivers. I know that we can attack in the air. But why do you got to run the football? I've said it a trillion times, and I'm going to keep saying it. Wear the defense down in the fourth quarter. Get those first downs. So in the fourth quarter, they're tired. If you're consistently running the football and you're doing everything that it can on the ground game, the air game will work out, and you'll get first down, first down, first down in the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter is the quarter we seem to lose every game. We get leads, and we lose those leads. Run the football. Win in the fourth quarter. Get after the quarterback, for goodness sakes. Let's get after the quarterback. Trey Flowers, you got paid big time last year. You need to get after the quarterback and stop the run. We do. I think our interior is much better already just just by the names and, and lack of injury than it was last year. I think we'll be able to stop the run somewhat. They lost their running back already for the year. Who knows if they pick up another one. But I think we can stop the run, but we have to get out of the quarterback and run the football. And TJ Hawkinson, I'm looking at you. If the ball comes to you in the red zone, you need to catch that ball and score touchdowns. Get touchdowns when you're in the red zone, not field goals. I love Matt Prater, but I love touchdowns a little bit more. That's how we're going to win. That's what we're going to do. And we beat the Bears, and we start the season off. Such a bad off season we've had going 3-12-1. And, and we start the season off with a win, a victory, with no home crowd. Who knows what it's going to look like? Who knows what it's going to sound like? But we can come on here and do victory Tuesday night on the One Pride podcast. Me happy. Post-game show happy. All of us happy. Excited that the Lions are 1-0. One of 16 teams that are 1-0. And 
and we go in the right direction and getting ready for Lambeau Field. That's what we do. Pride Nation, let's go. And that's the drop the mic. <laughs> and also that Alan Robinson is better than Kenny Galladay. No. Oh, mm. No. Yeah, he, he, he's going to say, you know who's a better wide receiver? Mitchell <laughs> Trubisky's a better wide receiver than Kenny Galladay. I mean, he might be a better kicker. <laughs> How about we shock and start rushing the passer? Frog crop, I am Facts. with you. I am definitely with you, folks. In 10 minutes, we go to you. Get ready for questions. Hashtag ISN. You can ask me personally. Ask the Dern. Ask Tonio, ask Trox, or all of us all together, whatever you want, get ready for your question. Hashtag ISN. Again, let's get those thumbs up. 62 in the chat, 55. We're almost a clean sweep. That would be nice to get to 60. What is one thing, Trox, that we cannot do, afford to do against the Chicago Bears? What is one thing we can't do? One thing we can't do is add another year where you have not won in the Matt Patricia era, game one of the regular season. Facts you cannot do that. Facts, facts, and that's a bold <laughs> that you know what, even though that answer was really short, that's still a drop the mic <laughs> moment because that's hashtag facts. Dern, what is what cannot take place on Sunday for us? There, there, yes, there's a bunch of stuff like we can't let Mac run wild, we can't let them get a run game because yeah. if they get a run game, then if Bowles is the quarterback, then. They're going to do play action to Allen Robinson. Mm -hmm. And <sighs> it's I'm going to be so upset if we lose that game. I, I'm going to be here. Yeah, you're not going to like me that day, man. My birthday is next Thursday. And that's oh. what I need is a, a W. Facts. 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 And a happy w. early birthday. W. We cannot. We can. We need to get that W for all our insanity. This do it for the Dern. Do it, do it, do it for for humanity, Antonio Hightower. What's what's one thing we cannot afford to do in that Chicago game? Um, let hmm. Well, if the QB is Mitch Trubisky, do not let him get on the roll. That's the one thing we cannot do. That, that is the thing he did last year because our offense couldn't move the ball a lot of the time. When Matthew Stafford was gone, like in the first Bears game, the Lions had Mitch Trubisky on lock for about a quarter and 13 minutes. But at some point, Trubisky is like, hey, I think I can make this open pass. And all of a sudden, three straight touchdowns just like that. Can't let the can't let the offense go on a roll. Um, I want to say you can't let Matt get going, but Matt's going to do Matt things. It's just going to happen. And we just and Taylor Deck is going to do as good as he can, which is better than anybody else in our old line of Matt Block and Mac. What we got to hope is that we got to hope Robert Quinn ain't who we think he can be still, because if he is anything he was to that Cowboys team, oh, we have a problem. We also need to make sure that Akeem Hicks does not run wild, because while Eddie Goldman is a huge loss, Akeem Hicks, two years, is like 350 pounds. He can step right into that role as a nose tackle, plus he gives you pass rush. So we just need to hope that we need to hope, first of all, none of the defensive players get going and the offense doesn't get going mm -hmm. because if they do, then, oh, man, the Lions are going to really have to tough this one out. Again, in six minutes, we're going to go to you. So get your hashtag ISN. We will go to you. It's Dern. Is there an announcement you got to make about somebody's birthday? What's going on here, Dern? Mine? Yeah. Uh, next. <laughs> Happy Next birthday Thursday to you. Happy birthday, Dern, <laughs> and to to everybody. I seen someone else's birthday is coming. Doctor so. Detroit. Doctor Detroit. Happy birthday. Yep. How old are you, Dern? I will be. 31. Oh my God! You getting old? You are getting old. <laughs> right? You old yeller. Great. Hey, I got you beat. <laughs> old yeller, old so yeller. Get some over here too. It was like, gonna be a surprise still next Thursday, but you got me. Out. You got I out. got. I seen it in the chat, and I had to name right. it out. Dwayne Hogan says thirty four seventeen Lions. I love it. I think Doctor Detroit has oh, us losing here. I don't know about that. Twenty four seventeen. Throw some scores in there. What do you think the Lions are gonna? What do you think the score is gonna be? I will say the Lions will win at twenty seven twenty four. Detroit Lions. I think I'm. I, I haven't looked at it fully yet. 
So don't make that my official prediction. I will be doing my Detroit Lions versus Chicago Bears. Get ready for it. I love doing this segment. What is one thing we cannot do for our Detroit Lions? We cannot get a freaking flag on third down. I swear, if we're on offense and we get a flag on third down, I am going to be throwing my mic because that has killed us. He'll throw himself. Every Michael single time. The mic. <laughs> third and one, five-yard false start. There we go. Now third and six. We cannot do these, these flags, guys. We cannot do the flags. It is killing me to see the flags. The Detroit Lions got to play a clean game, folks. We need to play a clean game. For our team to win, we have to we we shoot ourselves in the foot. And I feel like the Lions' worst enemy is not the who we're facing. It's not the opponent. It's the Detroit Lions. To me, that's the Lions' worst enemy is ourselves because we shoot ourselves in the foot, and it hurts. If we could just play a clean game, I think we have a really good chance to win. And turnovers, obviously, that is just a given. I see some scores in here. Lions win by 10. The general view. Noble Sports 24-21. Steve-O 30-17. Lions. I see a lot of Detroit Lions winning in here, and I like it. And I hopefully you guys are all correct. V. Probably Williams 28-14. Detroit Lions. We are going to kill the Bears 28-14. to No, Khalil Mack is too much. I see a lot here, man. I see a lot. And... What is your guys' thing that we can't do? Turnover of the ball is definitely one of them for sure. We cannot turn the football over. 3014 Dolo Dynamite. I hope you're Dolo Rhydamite. We want you to be right, and that's facts. Right. Let's go, Tigers. Tigers are playing, so let's go, Tigers. Travis Troxel. All the subjects you want to talk about. Is there one thing you want to reiterate? We got three minutes, and I will throw a fast one to everybody here. Well, I, I will give out a uh a scoreboard prediction for week one. Since Let's I do go. see it in the chat, I got the Detroit Lions winning 21 to 17. Woo! Hey, a win is a win is a win. Whether you win by 25 or you win by one. Dern, prediction before we go to the chat. In three minutes, we're going to you for questions. Throw those questions out there. If I miss it, do not hate. It's because I simply missed it. It's not because I'm being, being mean. What is your score prediction? I was going to say probably 23 to 16, but it's hard because the Lions haven't scored over 20 against the Bears in two years. And I know it's different this time because we have Stafford now for this year and they struggled versus. Oh, hey, what's up, man? TA, 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 TA. I know they struggle against Blau. And everything, but that's still a really, really good defense. That is facts, folks. TA a Noble Sports just joined us. That is very nice, but I see his mic is muted, so I will not go to him until that unmuted mic. I see some people asking about everything King. I think he just had a baby. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but if so, congratulations. TA a Noble Sports. Are you in here right now? And if Can you, you are the mic. Yes, speak, T.A. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? Okay, T.A., prediction. Detroit Lions versus Chicago Bears. I'm, I got I to gotta go with the Lions. Uh, Lions, 24-21. Lions. Woo! We are Let's high! go! <laughs> Woo! Perfect time for him to come in. That's absolutely perfect. Dern, I think you're on a time crunch. Let me know if that's the case. If you are... Let me know, and I can let you go. If not, we will keep rolling. What I'll do you stay think? for another five, ten minutes. Okay, folks, it is your time, <laughs> your time to ask us questions. Hashtag ISN. Get those questions ready. We're going to flow. We're going to roll. I'm going to go through it right now. Hashtag ISN. What's up, fellas? A lot of things are up, and the sky is one of them, and so is our... <laughs> Thumbs up. Let's get them all the way up as I look for, I know someone posted a question a while ago, so it's taken me a minute to find this, but yes, here we go. Ghost Gunner says, who would you rather the quarterback be in week one, Mitch or Nick? I would rather go against Nick because we usually have a harder time against mobile quarterbacks. Trubisky just, just has to be smart enough to run. 
I would rather go against Mitch Trubisky because he's really not a quarterback. Right. <laughs> Must be another tight end. Smart. GA Noble mm. Sports, you haven't said anything. What do you think, man? Yeah, it it doesn't matter who 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 I got who I gotta go against. I gotta I gotta comp- I gotta prepare for both of these guys. So I'm gonna look at footage on both guys. I already know what Mitch brings to the game. He's gonna uh, throw a pick. No, I'm just playing. No, Mitch actually, <laughs> Mitch man, Mitch actually. This is kind of crazy though, but Mitch kind of plays well against us. So we gotta be careful if he's the starter because Mitch could surprise us and go out there and have a 300 yard game. And we Born don't, we don't. Patricia. <laughs> right, right. We don't want him to do that. So you gotta, you gotta prepare for both guys because the Bears are trying to keep it a secret on who they're gonna. Who they're gonna go with? I think they probably gonna end up going with Nick. I think okay. that that's probably who they're gonna end up going with. I see sixty three in the chat, sixty one like likes. Let's get to sixty three. One Pride Nation. I don't know if this is a question, but I will make it a question. There is pretty much three NFL teams I hate: the Bears, Cowboys, and the Packers. So, what are three teams that you hate? Travis Troxel, Troxel Sports Talk. I hate the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers, and the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Ooh, we everybody Ooh. in the division. <laughs> okay, yep. Antonio Hightower. What do you got, man? Hmm. Who do I hate? Who do I hate? I don't really hate that many teams, but I guess the Packers. Yeah. Um yeah. That's a given. given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Steelers. Yeah. Oh, woo. God came out of nowhere. Okay. And I guess the mm, I guess the Patriots. Okay, okay, okay. Dern, is there something on your mind or no? Number three, I have – so I'm going to go from least hated to most hated. Number three, okay. Cowboys. Their fans yeah. are arrogant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two, Packers. Their fans are arrogant. <laughs> and number one, the Chicago Bears. I hate them so much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, one of the reasons why if we lose week one, I'm going to lose my mind. Yes. Yes, I will too. <laughs> I I I hate the Green Bay Rogerses. I can't stand Sharon Rogers. The cheeseheads. I hate the, the referees. I can't stand the team of the referees. They're always against us. And I can't I can't I can't stand the Detroit Lions screwing up. I know it ain't a team, but we seem to do it a lot. So I don't like that. Cole says Quintus Cephas does does he have more of an impact than Amendola? Not this year. He does not have more of an impact next year, obviously, because I think yeah. Amendola is not on the roster. Ta, what say you? Yeah, I, I definitely think that um, Quintus is going to have to take a back seat this year. He's going to have to learn a lot from the uh, veteran guys. I think he will get out on the field, but I'm going to say Danny probably is going to have more of an impact uh, also, uh, um, on the field more so than him. Because he's then he's going to be playing more than than uh, Cephas will be playing. Alexander Kamara, how much will Kenny G get paid? <laughs> let me let me go back. I made a video a while ago, so you probably can't find it. But my prediction is a five years, ninety three million dollar contract, around fifty. I say I think it's fifty two guaranteed, something like that. So I'm that's kind of my prediction there. That's kind of my prediction right there. Um, Dad Dude Live, he's also a Lions YouTuber. Subscribe to his channel. Says, what are you looking for? For most week one on both sides of the field, and what do you want and what do you not want to see? I love this question. First off, what I'm looking for, and I'll throw it to the rest of the panel, I'm looking for wins. I'm looking for running the football, and I'm looking to stop the run, trucks. Facts right there. Uh, run the football, stop the run, and keep Matthew Stafford upright. It's always a recipe for a, a win. What I don't want to see is Matthew Stafford on his back 10, 15 times a game. I don't want to see, you know, people dropping the ball. I don't want to see no run lanes open because the offensive line can't open up a hole. I want to mm-hmm. see, you know, us being able to legitimately open a hole, run through it, and put the defense on its heels. That's facts. Hootie J, welcome to the chat. I haven't seen you in here. And if you if so, I apologize. He says, do you think we should replace Quintus Cephas with Amendola? That is going, I think that is definitely going to happen after this year, unless yeah. there's an injury. But I do yeah. think Quintus Cephas, that's his job. I think that's, in my opinion, that seems to be almost a lock. Antonio Hightower loves Quintus Cephas. 
Talk about Quintus Cephas and why you think he is going to be a great replacement for Amendola. Hmm. I believe he could be a replacement for Galladay, but also. <laughs> um, no. We, he's, we he's franchise not wrong, him and trade him next season. But, you know, Cephas, Cephas, Cephas. I'm a really big fan of Cephas. He's explosive, got strong hands, can run from mm-hmm. the slot and on the outside. Really love the guy. Competitive. Gave it and gave the top corners in the draft a lot. He's going to be really good. Yes. I think he could be this year's Amani Awarie Dern. I know you like Cephas as well. Yes. I, I, I thought he was better on the outside. And I think he would be Marvin Jones' replacement instead of Amendola. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Marvin Jones' replacement. Interesting. I love Marvin Jones. I, yeah. I do too. I don't want to see him go. That, that's my Last thing. Last year of his contract, though. Yeah, I don't think I he's going to get up there. And Tone, what? I said, yeah, I don't think he's Kenny Galladay's replacement. He could uh, be. No. We'll see, he man. Definitely could I, be. If, not. if he asks for too much, and like I said before, if we're going nowhere, and we could trade him by the deadline and get some good picks. Jorge says, hashtag I didn't like that answer. <laughs> if you had to interview Rogers, what would your first question be? What would your question would be, uh, TA, if you could uh, interview Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> Mine would How be much a you pay the rest. Right, right, exactly. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Man, yes. stop paying off the refs, Rogers. Stop paying off the refs. I hate you. <laughs> we know that you've been giving them your salary for years. We're tired of you giving them the salary to the uh, refs, man. That's what I would ask him. I'd ask him, why are you such a arrogant prick? I can't stand you. Slightly <laughs> different like you. words. Hey, hey, when you win, Mike, you're supposed to be cocky. <laughs> yeah, they do it. Yeah, well, hey, I wish I could have the referees on my side. That's right. what I would be talking about. You pose a you you Well, when it's Super Bowl, we will. Yeah, yeah. We Didn't man, Danica I, Patrick just leave him? Yes. Ugh. I love her. She's <laughs> great. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. V. Wilson, he says, hashtag I said, did your decision change after the Detroit Lions training camp season prediction? Did it change Travis Troxel? Did it change? This is a good question. I'm going to go around with the chat with this one. Did the decision change after the Detroit Lions training camp season prediction? What was it before and what is it now? I think it stays at nine and seven. Okay, so no change. What yeah, about no change. Dern, what say you? Has your prediction changed? Absolutely, but it's not just because of our training camp. It's because of all the holdouts and what's happened. Okay. Um, I, I was really high on our team before. Um, sit, when we did our first predictions, like before everything started, and we did on the panel here, I think I said 10 and 6. Okay. But after looking at everything and seeing what every team did, <laughs> it's anywhere from six to ten wins. It's it's okay. a wide range. It just depends. All the dominoes have to fall in the right way. I'm going to throw it to the non Kool Aid drinkers here, and they're at yes, they're at the very bottom. They do yeah. not drink the Kool Aid. That's why I'm going to go last on this one. Antonio Hightower, <laughs> has your prediction changed? I think you said be no. right back. Okay, TA Noble Sports, has your prediction changed? No, because I ain't drinking a Kool Aid. I know you ain't. I know you ain't. <laughs> I'm not sipping the Kool Aid. <sighs> the Lions. No, no. My, my, my approach with the Lions this season is this I don't want to predict their record because every time I've predicted the Lions record, I've been wrong and I don't want to get shot in the foot for trying yes. to predict that. <laughs> for yes. trying to predict That's their why record. I gave a wide range. So, you know what I'm going to say with the Lions, what I've been saying all last year and all this year. I'm going to have that wait and see approach to see what the Lions actually do out on the field because the first four games is going to indicate to me where the season is going. That's going to be a great indicator. So I'm going to wait for those first four games, and after that, I'll come up with something. Can I expand on my answer just a little bit because we never got that question? He wants to interject. Yes, I I do. I do. I do because before – we were going to answer a question that I had a really long list to talk about. And so I was going to talk about every team's additions and losses. And so the Vikings, they lost Stefan Diggs, Limbaugh Joseph, top three corners, 
Trey Waynes, Xavier Rhodes, Mackenzie Alexander. They lost Everson Griffin, Josh Klein, their starting right guard, Javon right. Kurs, were their notable losses. Right. <laughs> their additions were Ngakwe that they just traded for. They Woo. got Michael Pierce, Woo. but he opted out. They got Anthony Zettel, we all know him, yep. and Tajay Sharp. Mm. Ooh, they they took a big hit in talent. Mm-hmm. So um I, I I'll talk about Ngakwe another time because that's a whole different thing. Bears additions, Nick Foles, Artie Burns, he's on IR, Jimmy Graham, Jermaine Fetty, Robert Quinn, Bartavius Mingo, and Jason Spriggs. Losses, Clinton Dix, Chase Daniel, Nick Kwiatkowski, Nick Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, it all depends on who's their quarterback. Um, yeah, Jimmy yeah. Graham does not scare me at all. No, he no. did. He did horrible with better quarterbacks. So it would blow my mind if he did really well this season. They have seven tight ends anyway, so it's <laughs> twenty five thousand tight ends. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Montgomery is hurt too, so he's not going to be playing week one. I think he's out four to six weeks. Um, Packers additions, Crick, Christian Kirksey, Rick Wagner. Uh, he's bum, terrible. Bum, 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 <laughs> yeah, Devin Funches. Devin Funches opted out. Okay. They lost Blake Martinez, which is huge in my opinion, because he was their tackling machine. Mm-hmm. Brian Bulaga, which mm-hmm. they replaced with Rick Wagner, which is mm-hmm. downgrade. Mm-hmm. They lost Jimmy Graham, yep. Tyler Fackrell. Yep. Oh yep. man, their draft was horrible. Yes, yes. They did not pick up any wide receivers. Yes, they still only have Devonte Adams as yes. a wide receiver. Yeah, yes. So, what are you trying our, to say about these our, uh, Devin, Devin Punches? Didn't he so, let's go. My number yeah, one Funches thing I'm gonna say yeah, he, he is he the North out. is the most wide open I have ever seen it before. Woo! It's like throwing a hot dog hey, down a darn. hallway, folks. It's wide open. Right. The it's, mic, brother. Wide open. <laughs> it's wide open. And I could have said <laughs> something there. They drafted a quarterback and I in the did first it. round. I and he's looking it. awful in camp. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> what? Who are, you, oh. are you, who are you more excited about? Carry on Johnson or the debut of DeAndre Swift? This is easy. Swift. Swift, yeah. Swift, Swift. I'm a Swifter guy. I'm going with Carry on. Carry on, John. I'm, I'm ready to see Swift. And we're going to Carry on. I already know what yep. Swift's going to do. Okay. Swift is hurt. Is he even going to play week one? Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we don't know. He hasn't been practicing much. Yeah, I was trying to Swift. ease him in. I'm looking forward to Ty Johnson. Okay. That's we why got some ties. We got, we got some tying going on here. We got some Swifties going on here. TA, what say you? Yeah, I definitely want to look at uh, Swift. I want to see what he's going to mm-hmm. do. Swift. You know what I'm saying? All eyes going to be on, be all eyes, yeah, all eyes gonna be on him because basically, you know what I'm saying, we want to know what he can do. We know that he can pass catch. We know that he can run, but mm-hmm. now he's in the pros. Now he's not in college anymore. So I definitely want to see what he brings to the table because I already know what Carry On can do. That's facts. That's facts. ISN, would you – you could hire one person on the lines to be a personal bodyguard – who would it be? Who would it be? Who would be my personal bodyguard? Oh, Taylor Decker. I got my number one easy. <laughs> I didn't know who it was going to be for me. Logan Stenberg. <laughs> he seems like a nasty guy I like from that. all I've heard. I want go nasty right with now. me. I like that one, Mike. Jared I want Davis. nasty. Jared Davis. No, you're gonna. Oh, he can miss. <laughs> Jared Davis going to the wrong person. You're gonna over pursue him. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. You're gonna blow his load quick. Jared Davis gonna run head first and hit the wrong person. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's why they call him the misguided missile. <laughs> I'm surprised no one said Christian Jones just to get him off the team. <laughs> I mean, he can't cover the tight end. I had doubt he can cover me. Yo, so. you know. <laughs> Chris Jones. <laughs> Roman the New Age. Ah, uh, that's definitely. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Where did this hey. thing go? Oh, my God. Oh, Thank my you. God. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, dude, live. Who would have thunk that your comment would really would have spurned this and it messed me up? 
<laughs> Hootie J says, I have the Lions going 10 and 6. Okay, Ooh. I have them going between a 9 and 7. I think 9 and 7, 10 and 6. Yeah, 7 and 9 is pretty good range. No, that's not a good range at all. I don't like so 6 to 10, man. Nine. That's what I'm saying. It all depends. <laughs> Dan I mean, Skipper. I go 8 and 8. Premature E. Yeah. Jack tackling. <laughs> That's kind of what Jared Davis can do. <laughs> he has a strong D, but then oh my god, three, twelve, and one. Oh man! Oh my god! Yes, I'm fooling. Absolutely. I don't. What are you guys to doing to me? Each jack, you each taculate. I, I I'm really glad my daughter left. Yeah. Oh my god! Cole Cole says. Hashtag guy is saying, what do you think about Hunter Bryant's impact will be if he makes the team? I feel he makes a splash with the injury above him Ooh, in the depth chart. Here, yes. Here's what I think about this. If Jesse James does not make an impact, he could be on a trade. He could be on a trade block before the deadline, and Hunter Bryant could be end up taking his role. That's mm. my thing. I don't mm. see him getting, I don't know how good has he been at camp so far. I don't see, I don't here's the thing. Jesse James has got to make an impact. If he doesn't, that's gonna real. What's the point of him being on this roster if he's yeah. not at least the rest of the year? I don't think anyone would trade for him. Hey, but is that hey guys? Is that really fair to Jesse James? He didn't get targeted a lot last year. I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like, like, we picked up the tight end in and the offensive coordinator didn't use him. Well, Why? that's facts. It's facts. I agree. So it's kind of a balance with him. Like you know, what I'm saying like he didn't get targeted that much. So I guess hopefully this season he'll have a better year. Yeah, a, a lot of it played a Logan Thomas. Oh, so Hunter Bryant won't be that good. <laughs> oh, well, a I lot of it though. Bryant... Is... Okay, go ahead, trucks. A lot of that though is you know Matthew Stafford wasn't healthy, so he right. couldn't get all the looks that he was supposed to. Yeah, yep. same with Hawkinson. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. They couldn't get I... the targets that they should yep. get. I'm 100 percent agreement with that. I think that uh, Daryl Bevel needs to do a better job, and the quarterbacks need to do a better job as well to look at him. Because if he is hard to miss. Yeah, and, he's a big button. Yeah. And if there's no one around him, you don't have to worry about premature etaculating. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about that. You truly don't. <laughs> Dern has got to go. Dern, I appreciate yep. you coming on, brother. You have yourself a great week. And absolutely. If you got something to say, say it to the folks. I'm going to say what I say every single time I'm on here. These yes, guys sir. work so hard to bring you guys content. And it means so much that you guys put the subs into ISN. A thousand already, six weeks. Amazing. Yeah. Thousand um, clubs in six weeks. We appreciate you guys. It, it's crazy. So you guys are the MVPs, like Trox said before. Um, I'm going to keep saying it, though. These guys work so hard to bring you guys content. Um, sub to all of them. Hey. Give a like on all their videos. It helps get through YouTube. All right, man. Hey, happy, happy birthday, Darren. Good one. Happy birthday. Next Thursday. To you. Yep. Happy Next birthday. Happy birthday. Thursday. Happy birthday to you. To you. Titan, right, upload you just, adios. <laughs> Titan Upload just jumped into the chat. He is a content creator as well. He does, obviously, he's a Tennessee Titan fan. So subscribe to his channel if you like the Tennessee Titans, because I do like Derrick Henry. I repeat, he is a fantastic I, running back. But he, he is overrated. He, he has a man crush. Not. Oh, a man right. crush. I mean, somebody <laughs> tried to tell me that Ezekiel Elliott isn't better than Derrick Henry. I'm like, um, he definitely is. Oh my god. Derrick Henry oh, isn't even a top god. five running back. Oh, oh my god. god. A double you oh my god. Crazy, oh man. my god. You're premature etaculating right there with that type of words. <laughs> premature etaculating. The most overrated running back to come out of Alabama since Trent Richardson. Yeah, so you're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. Hell, Josh Jacobs is better than Derrick Henry. No, let me, oh, yeah. Who did Jay says hashtag oh, ISN? On, what do you think about Jamal Jacobs. Agnew <laughs> switching to wide receiver? What do I think about him switching to wide receiver? Oh. I think he's got to attempt to make the roster somehow, and we all know yeah. he's not good at defensive back. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you might hey. as well throw hey. him on offense. Right. Yeah. Right. Man, it, this is crazy, man, because I did a video on Jamal Agnew. Like, you could go out to my archives. I did it like a couple years ago and talked about him making a switch uh, to being on offense. I thought that he was better on offense. It, it's kind of crazy 
that we're talking about this a couple years later, but they should have been made the transition with Agnew because when they was bringing him, him in and he was running jets, uh, sorry, jet sweeps and stuff like that, they should have already incorporated him into the offense. The dude was anytime he got in on offense, he was kind of making some stuff happen. So I think that Agnew, he, I think he definitely got a shot to make the roster because he's going to have to make it by being on the special teams. But I definitely think that he could be another gadget guy that the Lions could use in the season. That's facts on facts crime. TA spits nothing but facts. And if you've not hit that like button, we are at 67. Three away from 7-0. Let's get to 7-0. If you have subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Hulk, smash that subscribe button. Same with the folks on the panel because we got Travis Troxel, Troxel Sports Talk, formerly known as Nick Bodden Sports Talk on here, but he's been placed <laughs> on IR. And TA and Noble Sports, who is almost at 9,000 subscribers. So congratulations to him. Congrats, thank brother. Hey, thank you, brothers. I appreciate it. No doubt about it. Who is going to be our defensive MVP now with no Slay Trox? Who is going to be the defensive MVP? I am going to say it is going to be Mr. Tracy Walker. Ooh, we okay. Explain yourself. Well, every year he's actually gotten better. And with another year in Matt Patricia's uh, defense and another year with the guys around him because a lot of our guys have came back yeah and with that being said i think that you know he's going to have a level of, of confidence and he's going to know where his guys are, are going to be at or where they're supposed to be at so if he sees something going astray he can go and refix that problem quick fast and in a hurry the game is all about a game of inches so if he can help uh just a hair bit faster you know that can help uh interception or he can help get a guy into uh, pick, getting their interception. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like he's going to be a game changer for us this year, especially right. with no slay. Yeah, no slay, no slay all day to MVP Collins or Harmon. I see another to I mm. see Pat blue ball just joined up in here. What's going on? Plat blue ball, Mark crony. Welcome to the chat. If I have not shouted you out, I apologize. Elliot Thorne. Welcome to the chat. Antonio Hightower, defensive MVP. Who do you got? Hmm. Who else would I go with other than our best defensive player, Trey oh. Flowers? Okay. Mm. Definitely going with Trey Flowers. You know, if the, if the defense, you know, can cover for more than, you know, two seconds, if Jared Davis can stop leaving people wide open for no mm -hmm. reason, um, maybe he could have got 10 sacks last year. You know, if guys, you know, could use their eyes. <laughs> like we call Jerry Johnson got a missile. Oh boy, that don't even talk about his coverage. Whoa! Whoa! I saw, Whoa, I saw, game, I saw playing the Chicago game where this man Trey Flowers would have had a sack. It would have took like three seconds, but Jared Davis literally left the mm -hmm. guy open in the end zone. Everybody was blocked. Mm -hmm. It was just one giant hole where Jared Davis was. Okay, okay. You can trade out Trey Flowers just gets a little bit more consistent. Um, you get Trey Flowers a cons more consistent secondary. He probably would have hit 10 sacks last year. So I already think he's going to be really good. He put a bunch of pressures last year, even while being double teamed and and getting chipped and everything in the world because every offense mm -hmm. went went on the field and it was like, we care about what Trey Flowers do. Everybody else, we don't care. Go ahead and do y'all thing. So I think he – and I think the, um, the addition of Nick Williams – um, Deshaun Hand being healthy and Julian Akawara, who's probably gonna be like better than Everson Griffin. Um, I think all those guys, yep. the addition of all them guys and everybody getting healthy will really help Trey Flowers. Okay, that's a good answer, and I agree with a lot of your sentiment there. We got 69 thumbs up. I love the number, but I would love giggity. for it to get to 70. <laughs> Giggity, giggity. I would love to get to get to 70. So if you haven't hit that thumbs up, please do so. Subscribe to everyone on the channel. We got another question here, and this is from V. Williams. Are you looking forward to seeing Deshaun Hand, T.A.? Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. He's probably one of the first guys on defense I want to see because the inconsistency of his career so far. I definitely want to see what he brings to the table. And if he could be that legit defensive tackle that we need. You know, we have we've always been looking for a guy – to be in the middle and to be consistent year in and year out. And I'm ready for him to take that leap, man. I'm ready, I'm ready to see him play a whole 
full season because he has not played a full season since he's been with us, and I'm ready for him to take that leap. So if Deshaun Hand can be good on that defensive line, then it, you know it's it's gonna it's gonna make the team better, you know, because you don't want you don't want the uh, the back end getting exposed when the front end of the defense is not all that well. So if Deshaun Hand comes out and dominates. I definitely think that the Lions will be a little bit different as far as uh, that front seven go. So definitely, I want to see what what Hand brings to the table. Hashtag I said, do you think that we make the se- make or break season for Jared Davis because he's you know messing it up? I think this is definitely a make or break season for Jared Davis, no oh, yeah. doubt about it. I think this is a big year. If he sucks, he's a gone. If he's great, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, man. It's definitely a make or break for this guy. Uh, who do you think is going to make a bigger impact, Desmond Trufant, Jeff Okuda, or Jamie Collins? Honestly, this year, I'd say Jamie Collins is probably going to make the bigger yeah. impact. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I think he's going to make the bigger impact because Desmond Trufant is – he's good, but I don't know if he's like the game changer. Is I think Collins, our linebacking core was really bad. You know, yeah. when you got – I mean, you're looking at our linebackers. We had Jared Davis was missing, and we have Christian Jones, the – the worst MVP of all time. So Who? We don't want to even talk about his name. I, I will I say this. Name. Desmond Trufant is our stopgap for, yeah. uh, um, for Jeff Okuda. Yeah. Who are you guys? Who of you guys are streaming the Lions game and how will that going forward? I think we're all streaming the Lions game, yeah. not TA and not Red Iron yeah. Blitz as well. Yeah, Red I'm, Iron I'm Blitz, Michael White, yeah. and Troxel Sports Talk will stream the game. Guess what, folks? There is there is enough of people out there for everybody, and we're going to have fun. So you can choose and pick whoever you want. Folks, 75 thumbs up. Wow, 20 away from 100. If you're listening to this as a rewind, make sure you hit that like button. Folks, we've been on for nearly an hour and a half, and it is time to do our final words because we do for an hour and a half show. Antonio Hightower, what do you got to say to the folks out there before we close this bad boy out? Uh, it was fun coming on here with you guys today. You know, had to be... I had to set some lines for straight because they were saying some wild stuff. Um, tell her they could assert his contract. Um, Kenny Galladay doesn't. He's the fourth receiver in the division. Um, that's all I got to say. No respect. No respect. TA of Noble Sports. He came in late, but when TA comes in, it is never late. What do you got to say to the folks? Man, you guys are the real MVPs. Make sure you guys smash the like button. We uh, appreciate you guys for rocking out with us. Definitely. Uh, Subscribe to everybody on the panel. Also, make sure you guys watch their videos as well. Uh, Micro Mike, he's been putting out some fire video and content and stuff like that on the Detroit Lions. Also, Troxel has been putting out videos on NBA, and he'll be dropping some more uh, videos on the NBA. And make sure you guys just subscribe to everybody in the ISCN, man. We appreciate you guys for rocking out with us as we continue to try to bring you that content. And we appreciate everybody for subscribing to the Infinite Sports Network uh, channel to get that channel to 1K. So you guys are the real MVP. And you know what? I like to say uh, three words to you. Good morning, good evening, and good night. Cole, I seen you said, I literally got one question. Uh, Julian Aquara, I would say, does not have a chance. Uh, Jeff Okuda has a slim, a slim chance, but he does have a chance. I still think that Young is going to get it, Mr. Chase Young. What is up with you, Trox? And close the show out with what you got to say. Well, I do want to say I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. We did reach 1,000 subscribers. The reason why I haven't put out a video uh, since what was that Saturday is I have been working on uh, the merchandise store. I am uh, revamping it, do, uh, putting all of our new logos on it, things like that. So content is coming, and it's coming very soon. Just hang tight. And uh, like TA said, subscribe to all the members on the panel and every member in Infinite Sports Network. We do appreciate it. Uh, hit the thumbs up on this live stream for Micro Mike because it definitely helps him. And uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday for the One Pride podcast on Trucks of Sports Talk. With that being said, this is Trucks of Sports Talk. Have a nice day and I'm out. Peace. Pro, I appreciate everyone jumping in, taking their time to talk some Detroit Lions football, getting that blue Kool-Aid going, get that Mike Will going. We are close to the week one, just what we need. It is finally near here. I cannot wait to talk Chicago Bears versus Detroit Lions. I drop in video every single day. 
2 p.m. Eastern time. Expect a video on my channel to drop. Yes, 2 p.m. Eastern time. With that said, folks, hey, we are close. We're one day closer to football. Make sure you wash your hands and